All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Uh, I figured we'd have a little fun here today. Um, I have both my uh, Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro running, um, which as you know is running uh, GNOME 3.20, and at the same time I'm doing a screen capture on my uh, MacBook i5, so I have a MacBook Pro i5 running. And I wanted to look at some of the similarities between GNOME 3.20 and basically GNOME 3. Ever since uh, GNOME 3 came out, we've been seeing um, an interface that is almost identical to Mac OS X. So we're going to look at those and compare some of those settings. And I'm going to do things simultaneously on both computers. Um, so bear with me. I may seem a little bit slow. That's because I'm doing it at the same time on two computers uh, so we'll go through this but anyway first of all I wanted to point out um, how similar just the basic interface is so now we have um, up here a toolbar much like Mac OS 10 if I click the Apple and Mac OS 10 and I click the drop down here <clears throat> I have about this Mac um, some system preferences I can look at, an app store link, um, I can kill apps, sleep, restart, shutdown. Here I have um, microphone, I have audio levels, uh, brightness levels, and I have my Wi-Fi connectivity. And of course I can log off, I can shut down, I can lock the screen. Uh, many of the same things that I can do in the Mac, um, or excuse me, the Apple menu. So something interesting that they've added um, here to GNOME 3 is a sub-menu. So if I run an application, let's run Terminal, I actually get a sub-menu here that is very similar to the sub-menu in Mac so I'm gonna run terminal um, the big difference is right now not a whole lot of options maybe we're gonna see an expansion of that in GNOME 3.0 if I look on the Mac interface I actually have several different uh, possible options that I can take a much more expansive menu structure so it's definitely very very uh, more robust we've got a little bit of work to do in GNOME but I'm thinking that's what this is going to become uh, in the future so I'm gonna close my terminal here close my terminal over here <clears throat> and since we're talking about that I'm gonna open the terminal back up on both systems uh, not the terminal actually but I wanted to look at the interface here so um, now Interestingly enough, by default now, these two options are turned off. You have to turn them back on. Otherwise, you only get the close button on the upper top. So we have a close button here, um, both on the Mac and on Lenovo. We've got resize, but in a different place. And we have minimize, of course. So I can minimize here and minimize here. Um, very similar. Now, take a look at the dock. Now I've enhanced my Mac a little bit and I turned on the option to zoom the apps when you move the mouse over the different applications on the dock. But <clears throat> overall, if you look at the docks here, and I have moved this dock to the bottom by default, it is on the left hand side, which I actually like much better. Um, but they're almost identical so I have all my options here all the different applications I want to run and same for uh, GNOME 3.2 um, if I launch Finder in Mac and I launch Files I'm gonna shrink this just a little bit um, notice how similar Finder and Nautilus are now so 
in Nautilus, of course, we've got home and some recent. In Finder, we have all my files, uh, Cloud Drive, applications, uh, Google Drive, which is an app I installed, downloads, documents, movies. Here I have documents, downloads, music, pictures, and of course, trash. Um, my email account I can have access to. I've got some videos and I can include other locations which would be other computers that are connected to me um, but really very similar and then we have little widgets along the top um, I can show items as icons list view and pretty much the same here um, I can search I can do a search here in finder so looking at finder and looking at Nautilus it's really very very similar uh, pretty clear that GNOME was kind of shifting their desktop environment here <clears throat> now down here of course I've got show applications so I think I still yeah I have terminal running here on GNOME 3.2 so if I do uh, actually no sorry I didn't want that button um, what I wanted to do I'll get to that one in a minute uh, was if I hit the Windows Meta key and on the Mac if I do a three finger swipe up I can see the desktops that are running and I also can see all the applications that are running and just like with GNOME I can see all the applications that are running although I can't do the f three finger swipe I'm thinking possibly uh, I might be able to add that somehow I'll have to look into that over here I've got the different desktops just as I do up here I have the different desktops I can add a desktop if I want I can add a desktop here I can choose the application that I want to see um, so that feature is very similar different way of getting to it um, now if I launch launchpad and I launch show applications I basically get the same effect here um, I have all my applications listed and I do have the ability to scroll through and I'm using two fingers here um, <clears throat> left to right to go through the applications on the Mac and I can go down to all the different applications I have installed on Fedora 24 GNOME and then I can see I have the little dot to indicate how many screens I have and which screen I'm on I have the little dot here at the bottom to indicate which screen I'm on and how many additional screens of applications I have and I can do a two finger scroll down if I want to on the touchpad or I can use the scroll bar on the mouse <coughs> I have a search box here and I have a search box here in GNOME. Uh, if I hit escape and hit escape, I can exit out of my applications. Very, very similar. Uh, let's see, what else can we take a look at? Uh, let's launch the App Store in Apple and software in my Linux system. Okay, so it took a little while for um, the App Store to come up, but eventually did come up. I'm going to change the size a little bit. Uh, again, very, very similar. They have a featured application here. We have featured applications here. Um, we have a search here we can do. We have a search up here we can do. We can look at purchased apps here. We can look at installed apps here. We have updates that are available. We have updates that are available here on the Mac. Um, we have some editors picks. And on the Mac we have new apps and games we love some recommended stuff 
Um, we have categories here. So operating system games, Apple apps. Uh, then we go into categories here, audio graphics and so on. Uh, so the stores are really very similar. They're, honestly, you look at both of them, they're just about identical. Um, just a little bit of change, but, and I, I'm not criticizing GNOME, you know, for copying, because really, you know, it was either copy Windows or try something new, and that's exactly what they're doing here. They're trying something new. Uh, let's have a look at... settings so I'm gonna go here and type in settings and bring up my settings here and then I'll go to the Mac and let's see if I have an icon on the Mac for settings doesn't look like it so I can go here and do system preferences um, now this is a you know free BSD derivative Mac is so it really doesn't surprise me but the the graphical interface part uh, is definitely all Apple um, but there's just so many similarities here so we have some icons we've got power we have energy saving uh, we have keyboards displays um, I was just in sound making some changes for my microphone so I'll click sound on both of these and this just happens to be showing the microphone which currently is recording I don't know which sound will be better I'm using my uh, blue snowball mic on my Linux system so I usually use that um, and I'm using the internal microphone here um, so we've got output input sound effects and applications on uh, GNOME 3.2 we have sound effects and we have output and input a little bit simpler looking we have output volume levels we have output volume level here on the Mac uh, there really isn't a whole lot of differences it might look just a little bit subtle I have a back arrow here I can go to all settings again and a back arrow here to go to all settings so if you think about these two interfaces um, for GNOME this was a big change and, and many people were really really critical of basically what they came up with um, and I had made the comment that it was very similar to uh, Mac OS what was OS 10 which is becoming Mac OS and you know people were critical um, there was some comments in there you know surprised that I think that uh, yeah I really do I think you can see the comparison and see how closely related they are I'll do a minimize here and do a minimize here so a different effect but you know kind of the same thing um, I think GNOME was trying to bring about some change in the interface that we're used to um, and as I was working through my doctoral program I took a class on you know human to computer interaction and interfaces and how we work with computers and perceive um, how a computer either helps or hinders us and some people do not like the Mac OS and I would say that the majority prefer was mainly because they're using it and it's what they're used to and what they know when Microsoft decided to make a change and move to Windows 8.1 uh, many many people were critical and rightly so because really the interface was more adaptable to a tablet than a computer uh, but if you did have a touch screen Windows 8 and Windows 10 are actually very nice in tablet mode um, and I found it really useful I have a Windows tablet which I did a video on previously so you know I guess it's a matter of preference is what it comes down to um, I have become used to Mac OS so when I started experimenting with GNOME 3.0 I really wasn't that surprised um, 
to me it was it was easy and very intuitive for me to get used to because I'd been using OS 10 uh, more because that's where I was doing my video editing so definitely enjoy the interface um, one thing is I did switch primarily to KDE because with KDE apps it seems to be much more reliable such as Caden Live for video editing uh, for some reason it just Caden Live seems to crash uh, much more frequently under GNOME so hard to say there might be some services that are running in KDE Plasma that are needed but hope you enjoyed the video and the brief comparison um, curious to see what your comments are uh, and which OS you prefer which one works for you which is best for you um, is it because you've become accustomed to it or um, is it because it's something that you tried and you found you liked a lot thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video